Uh, my name is Ken Travis and I'm a Broadway sound designer. Uh, I've been designing professionally in New York City for 20 years. The first Broadway production I went to was not until 97, the year I moved here. Uh, it was The Life and it had won the Tony that year for Best Musical. Well, the first one I can remember was uh, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, early 80s. We had this thing in New York State, uh, it was called Art Park, and it was a state-funded art park. I mean, you like, you could see Calder, it'd be all these famous people, you know, you're seven years old, you have no idea who any of these people are, but we learned, you know, you sit there and watch them create something, and then they would help you paint, and you'd come in and do it. Uh, but I remember specifically going to see Joseph there because I thought I saw Elvis because the uh, the Pharaoh plays this Elvis character, and I think I probably bugged my parents for like two weeks doing my best Elvis impersonation. Early in my career, I think the public theater was my big moment. Uh, I was uh, mixing a show at the public. The designer, uh, composer, had a family emergency, had to leave, and while he was packing up, he ended up erasing the show material. And we had a dress rehearsal that night, so I had to try to recreate his work based on the material he gave me, which was a bunch of dat tapes and uh, you know notes written on a piece of paper. They said, "Can you, can you re recreate his work?" So, with his permission, I went back to the my studio in Brooklyn and just started editing. But I didn't have, you know, I didn't have all the material because they'd done this three times. So I'd be like, "Okay, I know we used this song here, but where's the tonic? Like, how did he resolve this? I can't find the final chord." So, well, I I'll just steal this. And so basically, I started cutting up his work. And we called him on, it was a Monday, and we, he was his day, he was dealing with whatever trauma, and we called him on a Monday, and I said, here's what I'm doing, and he was like, go for it. Inadvertently redesigned the entire show because I couldn't do what he was doing, and so my stuff started to take over being like, well, I can't make this work, so I'll put an environmental sound here, this wave crash will cover the fact that I can't do the chord change, and I'll steal the flute from this song and put it there, and that'll resolve this. And I just didn't even think about it, I did it. And the, uh, the show opened up and the next day, George Wolf called me to his office and said, um, the director said the show's never sounded like this before. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, I didn't, it's all I had to work with. And he's like, no, they, they're really happy. Would you like to work here? And from then on, I did three shows at the public and Shakespeare in the Park is the greatest thing in the United States. I mean, it's such an establishment and a great place to see famous actors and young people working it all out in an outdoor space. And uh, my career took off. And then it kind of fell apart when I didn't, I just wasn't happy. Uh, and then I guess the next, my big break was a Three Penny Opera on Broadway. And I was um, mixing Joe Jackson at the public. Uh, they had a new space called Joe's Pub. And somebody came up and said, hey, I heard you do theater. Can you do that live? Can you do this part? I'm like, what do you mean? Like theater like this? Yeah, I could do that. It's like rock and roll, whatever. And I totally tanked it. I mean, it sounded awesome, but it didn't sound like a Broadway show and everybody hated me. <laughs> so that was kind of, that's kind of like the catalyst, I think really getting into that. It, uh, Studio 54 really put me on the map because everybody knew who I was. My big, big hit was Memphis the Musical. Uh, written by David Bryan, who is uh, the keyboard player for Bon Jovi. I came into that show from a rock and roll perspective, and I was like, oh, we're doing a rock show again. Like, this is my, you know, crack my knuckles, like, this is what I did. And uh, so I came in and uh, did a rock concert on Broadway, and once again, everybody was kind of pissed. And, uh, but it really, the fact that I was able to pull it off, I mean, we were running you know, 100, 105 dB in front of house in a Broadway show where people are wearing, you know, omnidirectional microphones and there was a live band on stage that moved and the, it was so many moving parts, it was so complicated. Like the band would be playing and they would go behind a wall and the walls would shut behind them and it had to sound as if the band never moved. So we had to, you know, push technology to the limit and, um, it, the word got out, and people were like, I can't believe you can make a kick drum, you know, make my chest hurt, and yet I still understand what they're saying, and they're not at a microphone. So that kind of, everybody started to take notice, and then it won the Tony that year. Um, and then that, you know, once you have the Tony Award winning, you can put that in your lapel and 